bless you. It's good to be back here once again. Um, this time we were able to round up the kids and uh, bring them with us. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, we were rejoicing earlier today and, uh, at the house. I'm just really glad with the Lord for his presence here this morning. Yes, sir. Just how uh, easy we were able to transition from the singing up into the message. It's just... Uh, We'd like it to be that way every time. Amen. Just a free-flowing spirit and power of God. And um, I know the Lord, He has His ways of doing things, and there's nothing better than to let God do the things He wants to do. Amen. I think everyone is happy when we just let God have His way. Amen. Uh, when we let Him have His way in our lives, and um, allow Him just to, to be glorified. And... Um, Sister Wendy was talking about some stuff, I believe, that goes right along with what I'll be sharing tonight with the help of the Lord. And if the Lord would help me, I think I can preach the Word. And if you pray for me, I think I can preach the Word. Um, you know, it's, it's never easy being behind the pulpit, but God helps us. Amen. Amen. God helps each one of us. Uh, somehow, some way, I don't understand it, but somehow, some way, the Lord just strengthens you and uh, yeah. helps you. Uh, and I thank God for that. Amen. And so tonight, if you'll go with me uh, to the book of Psalms, chapter 55. Like I said, Sister Wendy uh, was talking and read the chap chapter 13 uh, of 1 Corinthians and really... As she was reading it and the things she was commenting, I really believe like the, it goes right along with what I'll be preaching tonight. And Psalms uh, chapter 55 is believed to be a Psalms that was written during some of the most difficult times in the life of uh, the psalmist David. How many of you have ever had difficult times? Amen. Amen. And it is it is generally believed that that's about the time that David wrote this psalms here. He was going through a very very difficult time in his life. Um, it's in the book of Second Samuel, I believe, chapter fifteen, chapter sixteen, and chapter seventeen. Now we won't read those scriptures. Or those chapters tonight, time doesn't allow for that. But I think it would it's a it's it would be good when you do have time at home. Uh, you can make time at home, read those chapters, and then uh, maybe think about this message and this psalms that that we're going to be looking at tonight. But uh, without a doubt, it was a very troublesome time in the in in the life. Of David. It was a time when his son Absalom rebelled against David, his own father, with the desire to take from him his kingdom. Now, can you imagine how terrible that would be if, if uh, your son, your child, uh, rebelled against you? And not, not only, you know, it's bad enough sometimes when, when children are rebellious, but here was a child who was not only rebellious, but desired to take the kingdom from his father. And had he had it his way, he would have killed David. And it was a very hard time, so I don't know that I do it justice by saying it was a hard time in David's life. It was, it was, it was a tragedy, to say the least, in the life of David. Um, he was in danger of losing his life. He had to flee from his own palace. He had to leave behind all that he loved and cared for. He had to flee from the city. And uh, things just were not going well for him. And if it wasn't bad enough that his own son had risen up against him to destroy him, uh, when you read chapters 15 and verse 31, you'll also see that one of his main men, uh, his, his counselor or... Um, as it were, his prime minister uh, also betrayed him. 
You know, I don't think there's anything worse than uh, being betrayed by people you really deep down inside believe love you. Yeah. Amen. That's a hurtful thing. Amen. It's a very hurtful thing. Hard to get over, hard to, to get the victory over those things because when you trust somebody and then they, they, they do you wrong after you've had confidence and trust in them, it's hard. And so you have David, a man whose son turned against him to take his kingdom, and then David's best friend turned against him uh, and, and allied himself to Absalom. And so that was, in, in, a, in a nutshell, was, was the time that David, it, it's believed that he, he wrote this Psalms. A very, very trouble, troublesome time. And so here in the Psalms, I know I've heard other people uh, speak about these Psalms and, and uh, you know, it's, it, at times when you read them, you realize that they're sometimes testimonies of what David went through. That help us today to be to be able to uh, overcome some of the things that go on in our life. Right. Amen. The things that he shares, he shares very intimate and personal uh, things in his life and, and things that he went through. And Psalms 55 is, is just that for us tonight. And we will see in this Psalms that there's um, really three things that we want to consider. And I think it's good... Not just for the youth, but for all of us that are here tonight. You know, when, when troubles sometimes come into our lives and crisis arises in our lives, sometimes our emotions get the best of us. Uh, sometimes we don't, we can't really even think straight, can't think clearly. Amen. But uh, for sure, different thoughts do go through our minds. Um, and David was also in that situation. At first, he felt. Uh, fear of the danger that was going on. And in that fear, he felt that maybe it was best to take flight and to leave and flee the dangers. Um, but later on in this chapter, we will see that David was upset, was mad. I don't know if you've ever felt that emotion or that feeling when somebody does something wrong to you. You get upset, you get mad. And uh, if you could have it your way, you might want that person to just, God, just take care of it. Just make them disappear. I don't know if you ever felt that way, but uh, I know I have at times. And then, um, and then later on in the chapter, we'll see where David turns to God and says, God, um, do it your way. Just deliver me from it. Amen. Whatever, whatever needs to be done, God, you do it. And we will find it true in our life if we haven't yet lived uh, many years. We just need to live a little longer. And we will realize that uh, we may find ourselves in, in different situations in life. And how important it is. I know that the older um, uh, brothers and sisters that are here can attest to it. Uh, crisis and, and hard times that come in life. And to our young people, of course, uh, and my children and those others that are here, it's important to know that when things, that things will happen in life, mm -hmm. yes. there will be hard times, there will be crises, but we can still trust in God Amen. that He'll get us through it. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important about this testimony that we find in Psalms chapter 55. Mm -hmm. Because... We're not the only ones that goes through it. David went through things way back when. Amen. Yeah. And so this is kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, what we'll be looking at tonight in the words of the psalmist David. And I like how the psalmist David begins here in verse 1 of this chapter. And it says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. We see in the life of David that prayer was the most important thing to him. In his moment of, 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 
of trouble in his moment of anguish and affliction, it was to God who he resorted to. And he prayed to God, amen. He asked God, Lord, hear my prayer and give attention to my supplication. Glory to God. And that is, that is really what the child of God uh, will have to learn to depend on. Amen. Going to God and asking God in the midst of those trials and those tribulations and those afflictions, no matter what they may be. Amen. That you can go to God and pray. Amen. And ask God. And prayer becomes really the salve for every sore and a relief for the spirit of every one of our burdens. We can go to God. And there is nothing that God cannot help us with. When we're burdened down, when we're weighed down with our trials and temptations, we can go to God and say, Lord, hear my prayer. Amen. And help me, Lord. And don't hide yourself from me, but hear my supplication. You know, he, he wasn't just talking to God. He was crying out to God. Amen. His supplication. He was crying out to God in the midst of his affliction. And sometimes, you know, that's what it's going to take. It, it's really a, a crying out to God. Amen. And, and asking God from the depths of our hearts, from, the, from everything that is within us. Amen. Glory to God. And, and go to him in prayer and urgency and ask God. Amen. To help us and to deliver us. But uh, this is David's plea for help from God. Amen. And it's interesting to note that he mourned. The Bible says, I mourn in my complaint and make noise. It will not always be easy to, to, to feel the peace when we're praying to God about our situation. Amen. It will not always be easy to do that, but that's exactly why we must go in prayer to God over our difficulties and the things that arise in our life. Uh, even in the midst when we're praying out to God, it, it won't be easy, amen, to feel the peace. Here was a man who was praying to God, and in the midst of his prayer, he was mourning and crying and asking God and, and making all sorts of noise because he was really in a very troubled time in his life. Amen. Yes. Now, he couldn't understand why those things were going on in his life. I mean, how could you understand when your child rises up against you to destroy you, kill you, and take your kingdom? How, how, how could anyone understand that? And sometimes that's how our life may be. In different situations, we may not understand the hard things that we're going through, but we can ask God and cry out to God and say, Lord, help me. Amen. God has no problem with us going to Him and pleading and asking Him for help. Amen. Um, moving on to verse um, 3 through 5, we will see the psalmist David lamenting because of his condition. I don't know if anyone here has ever lamented over their condition cried about it, you know, felt bad about it, you know, and here was a man, the Bible says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me, he says, my heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me, fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. This man here, David, uh, when we read into the words, we, we read that he says that the voice of the enemies and the oppression of the wicked have cast iniquity upon him. I believe we can, consider, we can consider two things. One is that those that were wicked men and that were causing his troubles, that were oppressing him, were just causing him all sorts of, 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 of problems. They themselves were just... Uh, uh, there to, to, to be an affliction and to be a, a thorn in his side. They were there just doing whatever they could to cause him problems. But on the other hand, they could have been saying awful things about him. What could have caused the city 
of, of, of David to rise up against him. And those that were close to him, what could have caused them to rise up against David? But the words of evil oppressors that would speak evil things about him and turn the hearts and the minds of people against him. Amen. Amen. Praising and so it is in, in, our, in our life. Uh, there, there may be those, amen, that uh, would oppress us and cause us trouble and, and problems. And as uh, Sister Wendy's friend uh, stated, someone may just not like you for whatever reason. And cause you troubles and say things about you that will cause others to turn against you. And that was the situation yes. here in David's life. Amen. Oppressed. His heart was pained because uh, he had these problems and these uh, 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 afflictions in his life. And the Bible says that because of these problems there was fear and trembling that came upon him. And horror that came upon David. So much so that the Bible says that he was overwhelmed. Yes. Amen. Uh, at another time in the life of David, if you turn to Psalms 118 and verse 6, there was another time in the life of David when he had a little more peace, was a little more at ease. And at that time, he said, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Amen. And he said, what can man do unto me? Glory to God. Amen. That was at another time in David's life. Where he, where he was able to shout in that victory. I will not fear. I know God is with me. I know he is on my side. What can man do to me? If, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Glory to God. But at this time in David's life, he said, I'm full of fear. I'm full of trembling. And I'm overwhelmed. Amen. Uh, and he had this fear in his life and in his heart. Uh, fear of death. Fear of destruction. Um, fear of being overrun by his enemies. Can we relate to that tonight? Yes. Ever having those kind of fears? Ever uh, feeling overwhelmed and, and just... Uh, uh, perplexed, trembling because of the things that go on in our lives. Now, listen to David. David said in his heart, And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. And verse 8 says, And I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. David said, if I could, if it were possible, I would do like the dove. The dove really has no other defense mechanism other than taking flight. Amen. And getting up into the, into the sky, into the clouds, and, and going from where his troubles are to a far place. And this is what David was saying. He said, if I could, because of my troubles and my fears and, and the things that have uh, come upon me, if I could, I would just take flight and leave and never come back to this place. And go into the wilderness and there, far from everybody, far from my troubles and the people I know and the people that caused me my afflictions, far away from these that speak evil of me, I would go there alone into the wilderness, into the woods, and would not worry about them anymore. If I could, I would take flight. Fly away, far away. Amen. But, that was not the will of God in our lives. Where can you go today that you will not find trouble? Where could you run to today that you will not find trouble? Everywhere in this world there is trouble. Everywhere in this world there is uh, uh, pestilence and wars and famines and all sorts of things. And everywhere you go, people are the same. I told my wife in all the travels that I've gone from here to South and Central America, uh, Europe and parts of Africa, I said people are the same everywhere. 
Sometimes we think the grass is greener on the other side. And it's not. People are people everywhere. Trouble is everywhere. Amen. We will find it everywhere. So what is the, uh, the answer? Is it to, to flee and take flight and run away from our problems? Or is it rather to cast all our problems and all our cares upon Christ because He cares for each one of us? Amen. That is the answer, glory to God. It's casting all our cares and all our burdens upon the Son of God because He loves us and cares for us. Amen. It's not running. It's not fleeing from our problems. Amen. But rather, it is to go to Christ. Is it Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, where he calls us and he says, come unto me, amen, all ye that are, are, are burdened and heavy labored, amen, come unto me and I, yes. I shall give you rest, mm -hmm. amen. The key, the answer is not running from our problems, but it is taking them to God and asking him, amen, who has so wonderfully opened up his arms and said, come unto me with your burdens, come unto me with your fears. Amen. Come to me with your troubles and your problems, and I shall give you rest. Right. Glory to God. We have, we have no need to run anywhere but to the hands of God. Right. Ask Him to help us. Amen. Glory to God. Right. Because He is our rest. Uh, David was uh, in troubles, and he said, Lord, if I could, I would run, run, run. But we don't need to run. Amen. We just need to take it to God in prayer. Yes. Praise Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Verses 9 through 15. Of course, first he desires to run. And now it seems like his heart is turned to let the emotion of anger, possibly hatred, take a hold of his heart. So much so that after he has felt the need to flee and run and just get away from everything, now his heart turns to, Lord, destroy them. Oh Lord, and divide their tongues, he says in verse 9. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about. They go about and upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from their streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have bore it. Neither was it. He that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them. You see the heart of David? And let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. His heart is turned from fleeing to all of a sudden, God, just destroy them. Amen. Just get rid of them. I'll wipe them off the face of the earth and do away with them, God, for their wickedness and their evil ways and their evil oppression. Yes. And all too often, uh, man, when he's not careful, and even the Christian person, when they're not careful, will let... Uh, the, the, the troubles and the persecutions and the despisement of others and the evil things they say about you or the way they treat you or react towards you or respond to you. Uh, if we're not careful, we'll let those things creep into our hearts and, and grab a hold of our heart and turn it into a hatred towards them. But that is not God's will. Amen. Was not God merciful? The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Enemies of God, amen. Uh, yet God loved us, died for us, went to the cross for us, demonstrated great love, amen, and mercy and compassion. Glory to God. And uh, David said, God, just get rid of them. Amen. Just get rid of them. It's hard. It's so hard. Uh, and he begins to talk about, more specifically, that one individual who was at one time his very best friend, very intimate friend of his. And he begins to testify to us and he says, look, it wasn't my enemy. It wasn't somebody that I knew hated me that has turned against me.
me. Had it been someone that I knew hated me, then it wouldn't hurt so much. But it was someone that I that I loved and I believed loved me. And that person has hurt me. That person has done evil against me. And um, I don't know if any of you have ever had that happen to you in your life. Those that you had confidence and trust in. And that's one of the dangers. Is you know, David, here was David, and as he thought about it, he said, God, let death, let death seize upon me. The, the, the heart of a man who, who was who was who was going through these movements in his in his emotions and in his spirit. At one moment he felt like fleeing, at the next he said, God, do away with them. Because they've dealt treacherously with me. This was a hard time for David. And he was praying to God and asking God. Amen. Cries out for vengeance. And he prays for judgment upon those that have uh, done evil. That's the easy thing. That's the simple thing. It's harder to pray for them and ask God to save them. It's, it, it's easier to sometimes allow those hard feelings to come in. And, 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 and desire bad things to happen to those that do wrong, that wrong us. That's the easy thing. The hard thing is praying to God. Yes. And getting down on our knees and asking God, Lord, uh, save them, Lord. God, change their hearts, change their minds, change their ways. Glory to God. Because it takes also a humbling on our part. And a, and a turning over to God, Lord, have your way. Not my way, not the things that I want, but what you would do. God, save them and, and, and bring them, amen, into your fellowship and into your love. And here was David who struggled with it himself and said, Let death seize upon them for their wicked ways. Amen. But to the child of God, we must pray for the salvation. Amen. It's hard to forgive someone, but the Bible says if we want to be forgiven... Amen. We must forgive. Right. Even if it was a close friend of ours. Amen. Who has done us wrong. Even if it was a brother or sister in the flesh. Even if it was a family member. Even if it was a co-worker or maybe a friend at school. Whatever it may have been. Even if it was one of our brothers or sisters in the Lord. Uh, David says, you know what? We went up into the house of God in company. Amen. Speaks to us here. Even if it was a brother or sister in Christ. Amen. We should pray to God that, to help us to not let those bad feelings uh, hang around. But pray them off and, and pray for them. Amen. Glory to God. Um, and as David contemplated and thought about these things. In verse 16. This is where faith. In God and in His faithfulness uh, comes in, really. And David says, after all of that, after all his fears and all his desiring to run and after all his, his uh, desiring for God to destroy his enemies and, and wipe them off the face of the earth, David says, as for me, I will call upon God. Amen. And the Lord shall save me. Amen. In the end, David said, you know what? The best thing to do is to turn to God and ask Him, amen, trust in Him, have faith in God and uh, confidence in God's faithfulness to deliver. Amen. Uh, this is David's words in verse 17. He says, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and He shall Hear my voice. Now this is the heart of a man who has completely understood that it's not about running from his problems. That it's not about taking flight and forgetting about everyone. That it's not about praying to God to bring judgment and destroy the people of this world. Or his world at that time or our world at this time. But now he realizes that the best thing to do is to turn to God. Amen. To have faith in God and cry out to God knowing that God will save him. Knowing that God knows how 
how to deliver, and He knows how to make a way of escape where there seems to be none. Amen. And He says, I will pray in the evening, I will pray in the morning, and I will pray at noon. I will pray, 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 and I will pray out loud, and I know God will hear my voice. Glory to God. We can be sure that if we pray to God about our problems, about our trials and crisis in life, if we pray with urgency, if we pray in the morning, in the evening, or at noon time, glory to God. We need to have the confidence to know that God is hearing us and that He will, glory to God, answer our prayer. Do you have situations in your life? Do you have trials? Do you have things you've been praying over for quite some time? Well, keep praying and trusting in God. Because He will hear your prayer. Amen. David said he had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Amen. You know, it may not always be that he will deliver us from our battles, but he can give us peace in the battle. Amen. 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 He can, he can see us through our trials and our tests. Yes. How else would our faith be encouraged? How else, how else would our faith be strengthened and built up were it not for the trials and the tests that God allows to come into our lives so that our faith, the Bible says, can be a precious in the sight of God. Amen. And, and, and more durable than the gold and the silver and the things of this world. Amen. That when God finds us, glory to God, He may find us having faith in Him. Glory to God. He may not always remove our trials and our tests, but God is able to walk with us in the midst of the fiery furnace. Amen. He's able to keep us in the lion's den. Amen. That's how God works. And praise God, because He knows how to deliver us His way. Not our way, Amen. but God's way, delivering us, amen, Amen. Uh, from the battle that was against me, he said, for there were many with me. The Bible says in verse 19, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. You can rest assured that if you leave it into God's hands, you know, God is a righteous Judge. Yes, he is. Amen. He's going to take care of it. It's a scary thing when people rise up against God's people. When uh, people rise up against God's anointed. Uh, when people rise up against uh, God's chosen people. God, uh, He is merciful. He is kind. And He wants nobody to be lost. He wants everyone to be saved. The scary thing is that people continue to go down the path they go and continue to do the things they do. God, who is a righteous and a just judge, eventually He will do and give according to the works of everybody. Amen. We just leave it in God's hands. Say, Lord, you take care of this. You take care of it. Amen. I'm trusting in you. I have faith. In you and in your faithfulness that you know how to deliver and bring me out of this oh, yes. trouble. Thank Amen. Yes. That's where we that's where we get rest. That's where we have rest in peace. Yes. Is when we have faith and confidence in God that He has all things under control. Amen. The Bible says, verse 20, he had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. Verse 20 refers back to uh, David's counselor. Um, in this section, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. That just helps us understand how David felt about the situation. But verse 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. When we are burdened down, when we do have troubles in life, 
The best thing to do is cast our burdens upon the Lord. Yes. Amen. For the Bible says he shall sustain you. Amen. 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 When, the, when, when the, the things of life come against us, if we put our faith and our confidence in God, no matter what it is, no matter how impossible it may seem, if we put our faith and trust in God, amen, uh, even when it seems that it, it's gone beyond the, the, the uh, being able to be repaired, even when it seems that it's gone beyond uh, the time allotted, even when it, when it seems that there's nothing that can be done, we see in the scripture that that in the midst of those moments is when God was glorified. Amen. Amen. We read about Moses at the Red Sea and there was the people shouting and screaming because Pharaoh was coming to destroy them and kill them. And they had nowhere to go. But it was then that God said, be still and see the glory of God. Amen. And where there seemed to be no way, God opened up a way for them to get across. Amen. When, when Martha and Mary were crying and all the people were crying there because Lazarus was four days dead. And the people said, you showed up late, Lord. You should have came when we called you. Amen. Jesus reminded them, I am the resurrection. Glory to God. And he went to the place of the sepulcher and asked them to remove the stone. And then he called them out by his name. Amen. Yes. And now he came alive. Amen. What seemed four days late to these people was right on time for Christ. Amen. 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 And so when we cast our burdens upon the Lord, even when things seem beyond repair, we need, to, we need to know that He will help us. He will strengthen us. He will encourage us. And He will see us through our hard times. It doesn't matter how devastating the, the, the thing may be. It doesn't matter how, how deep the wound has gone. Yes. Amen. Uh, God is able to help us. Yes, he yes. Is. Amen. God is able to help us. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. He is an anchor in our life. Yeah. Amen. Confidence in God and His faithfulness is an anchor in our life. So that we are not moved. Amen. Uh, so that we are not uh, uh, blown away or taken away. Amen. In that whirlwind of our troubles and our problems. Amen. But we have a sure anchor when we trust in God. Amen. Uh, so much so that we are not moved. Amen. Glory to God. But we're able to, to remain unmovable and unshakable. Glory to God. Trusting in His name. Verse 23 the psalmist says. Thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. <coughs> it's wonderful to know that God is in charge of this justice department. That's right. Amen. 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 He's in charge of it. And he says here, But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half of their days. He says, but I will trust in thee. Amen. How do you feel about it tonight? Amen. Glory to God. Will we, will we desire to flee from our problems? Will we desire to run away and, and, and run and continue to run? What we'll find out is that wherever we go to running with our problems, we will just find peace for but a moment. For a moment's time. But you can rest assured that problems will come again. Amen. That's right. So fleeing from our problems is not the answer. If we allow hatred and anger to enter into our hearts and wish people uh, evil and wish wrong upon them and, and pray that God would uh, cast judgment upon them quickly, it's not the way of a Christian person. But rather we should pray, Lord, save them, change them, transform them, bring them into our midst, Lord, so that they can praise the Lord and, and sing songs and be at this altar uh, serving you. Yes. Yes. That's the answer. Trusting in God. Lord, whatever it is, it's in your hands. Amen. Whatever I'm going through, God, I'm trusting in you. I know you're in charge of this thing. And whatever... 
uh, comes of it, Lord, I'm praying, just let your will be done. Save them, change them, keep me, Lord, so I'm not moved, so, so that I go nowhere, but I stay in your presence. Lord, I will trust in thee. Yes. And that's what, that's the, the, the heart of the Christian individual. Amen. Glory to God. I'll ask you to stand tonight. God is a just God. And I know that He is able to help us if we trust in Him. Again, I want to remind you that it don't matter. And it won't matter. It, don't, it didn't matter in the past. It don't matter right now. And it won't matter tomorrow or the next day or the next week, next month, next year. It won't matter. You trust in God and He will sustain you. He will see you through it all. Amen. 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 Now put your faith and your trust and confidence in God. I want to open up the altar for you to come and just uh, spend uh, some time with the Lord and just ask Him, Lord, help me. Uh, you may not be going through anything today. I think I said something on Friday about, you know, um, it, it, when, when, when everything is calm, our foundation, you know, our foundation doesn't matter. But when crisis arises, then our foundation is tested. That's right. And right now we may feel like, well, everything's going fine and dandy, everything's good. But the prayer is, Lord, help me. So when that moment comes, when I do find myself in those trials and those disappointments, and, and whatever it is, Lord, help me today to have what I need. So when that day comes, I will be ready and I will be able to say, Lord, I will trust in Thee. Amen. Come to the altar, if you will, tonight. And let us, let us pray to God this way. Amen.